The last time I talked about Josh Hosang, it was not really in what I would consider to be circumstances that were entirely complementary to the player. Now, I haven't talked about him very much on this podcast, but on the one occasion that I can think of that I did, I compared him to Connor McDavid, and I basically treated him as a, you know, as a measuring stick to determine you know, the ways that attitude can affect the way that a player will develop and what they can become. And Josh Hosang, you know, there's a lot of people out there that I think they would agree with this statement, is that he should be more than what he is right now. You know, Don Cherry, of all people, thought that having coached both players, that he thought that Josh Hosang was the better of the two players in terms of pure talent. But Josh Hosang was widely regarded to have a problem with his attitude. And Connor McDavid, with the exception of maybe a few isolated incidents out there, he doesn't have those kinds of questions floating over his character that have kind of determined the way that he's viewed by the, you know, by the hockey populace. And it's allowed him to work a lot harder to develop his skills and become the kind of player that he could become than Josh Hosan could. But I mean, that shouldn't be to say that I completely think ill of Josh Hosan. That's not actually true. And I was really, really thrilled this past September when I saw that he had been picked up by the Toronto Maple Leafs and that they were going to give him another opportunity, specifically because it had been determined by somebody within the Leafs organization that he had really turned his attitude around. And now we can start to see him become the kind of player that Josh, that Josh Hosang can be. And I think that this season in the Marlies, you know, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs AHL affiliate, I think that we have seen that he has definitely turned over a new leaf in terms of his attitude, and he is definitely showing up to play a lot more than he was before. Now, I checked out his uh, his stats before sitting down to record this, and he has some very strong stats for the AHL. I think it's 20 points in 29 games. You know, not exactly NHL superstar in the AHL stats, but this is a guy who's rebuilding after, you know, a lot of kind of these, these start-stop kind of experiences with his, with his professional hockey career. I think that you should expect to see that his, his, his growth has been kind of slowed by that over the years. But now Josh Hosang is back in the spotlight again in a big, big way. Actually, maybe even potentially in the biggest way of his career to date. And that is because Josh Hosang is what you would consider to be one of the, uh, the, the star forwards of Team Canada at the Olympics. And I think there's no two ways about this. This Olympic hockey tournament ought to be Josh Hosang's coming out party. For a player like him, <laughs> the stage could not be set more perfectly. You're looking at a guy with a skill set with a very, very high ceiling, with NHL superstar ceiling, you know, if he can still get there at this stage of his career. And then on top of that, you're looking at a player who is, you know, I think, God, what's the best way to describe this these days? Uh, you know, would it be, would it, would it be appropriately sensitive to say that he's a player of Chinese descent who's now playing in the Olympics in Beijing in a market that the NHL very much would like to crack as a hockey market? You couldn't actually look for, for a more just absolutely perfect set of circumstances for Josh Hosang to relaunch his hockey career. Now, as I sit down to record this, Team Canada has played one game on the men's side, and that was the uh, the game against Germany, which they won 5-1 to one in the opener. You know, absolutely a, you know, a, a great start to the tournament for Canada. Now, the one thing that I will say about that is, honestly, I didn't think that Josh Hosang looked very sharp with his line mates. You know, he's skating with uh, Eric Stahl and Mason McTavish. And it almost kind of seems like right now those three players haven't really figured out exactly who's going to drive that line. But I don't think it would be terribly unreasonable having to watch that game. I don't think it would be terribly unreasonable to say that there were times in that game where, you know, Josh Ho saying, you know, he did look, for lack of any better phrase, you know, a little bit McDavid-esque. And, you know, even not having always been strictly complimentary to Josh Ho saying, now, I have to say that if this is actually what we're all kind of hoping that it is, and he really has turned around his attitude, and he really has figured out a way to take those next steps forward as a professional hockey player, I gotta tell you, I'm all about it. I'm excited. Not only do I hope that this is Josh Hosang showing us that he can turn his attitude around, 
I hope that it's showing us that he has turned his attitude around to become the player that he's going that that so many people always knew that he could become. You know, even if his attitude had given a lot of NHL teams a lot of doubt that he ever could do it. Now there is one caveat to keep in mind, and as as you look at the uh, the the hockey schedule for the Olympics this year, it's actually a pretty short schedule compared to previous years. There's only three preliminary round games. You know, Canada's going to have, you know, they've already had one against Germany. There's one against the United States. I believe that they have the third one against China, which I think could turn out to be a very interesting game from a, uh, from a marketing perspective from the Beijing organizers. But basically what that means is that Josh Ho Sang, he does have a pretty short window to really show what it is that he's become as a, as a hockey player since he's turned his attitude around. But if you can start to put that together in the next game and really build on it from there, I gotta say, like the Toronto Maple Leafs and their fans have gotta be licking their chops. They have, if he actually manages to pull that off, they're gonna have a real steal on their hands. I mean, as an Oilers fan, I wish it wasn't the Leafs that uh, that, that potentially had this on their plate. Uh, but then again, you know, really, we haven't done that badly with Evander Kane since picking him up. But even so, I think it's reasonable to say that really maybe one reclamation project per season is uh, probably all that any team ought to be taking a chance on. So if it does work out for them, geez, can't fault them, because really, I think that hockey would be a better place if... If guys like Josh Hosang are meeting their potential, you know, then it is if they're not. So we'll just have to keep an eye on this tournament and see what transpires.